Hello again. My name is Dr. Bill Johnson. I'd like to welcome you to you to another edition of Exploring Our Schools. As we have done in the past, we have focused every year on our annual expenditure plan, which we'd like to talk to you about. I mean, the Board of Education every year is obligated to bring to the community an opportunity for it to vote on our budget. And what we try to do every year with the Board of Education is provide you with an opportunity to hear why the board did what they did, what they're expending their money on, so that you have a full understanding of exactly what it is your tax dollar is being spent to support. So I have three people with me today who are going to help us try to better understand that. We have two members of the board, the president and vice president, John O'Shea and Tara Hackett. Thank you very much for joining me. And I'm going to start with Robert Bartels, who was our assistant superintendent for business. And maybe what you could do is just talk a little bit about some of the numbers before we move off the numbers and into what exactly the, the, those numbers actually buy. Sure. Uh, the budget for next year is going up by 2.63%. Um, that is, uh, that will translate into an increase in a tax levy of 2.65%, which is under the tax cap again. Uh, the ca tax cap, um, as you know, is, is typically people hear 2% as, as, the, as the cap. Uh, that number is a little misleading because there are a number of um, uh, calculations that go into that cap number, which is why our tax cap is 2.66%. Uh, so at 2.65, we will again be under the tax cap. Good. So again, the, the tax cap, when you say that, that's not just the expenditure side, that's, that's the, the tax cap really has to do with the tax levy, right? That's Correct. the amount of money that we're able to raise. So our budget is rising by a little bit more than that. Correct. Okay. So I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I, maybe the easiest place to start would be an article that appeared in Newsday yesterday in which they wanted to tell the entire world where they are, how your money is being spent. And it's something that the state has done for many years, which is to have us reorganize our budget into three parts, administration, instruction, and capital. Maybe we could just kind of talk a little bit about what's included in each. And just for whatever it may be worth, the, the world out there, the average for the administration is 10% is and above. We're at 8.8%. So, that includes, it used to include just central office, and as a matter of fact, when the State Ed Department it usually has us listed around 2%. However, in the three-part budget, maybe you could just talk a little bit about how that's divided. Sure. Uh, the administrative components are all of the supervision for the schools, all of the central administration, uh, legal expenses, um, uh, different things like that. The instructional component is based on all of the teacher salaries, all of the uh, funds that go into the buildings for all of our different programs, uh, which in does include uh, students that go um, out of district uh, to other, other schools, private schools and parochial schools. Uh, those are all in the instructional component. And then there's a capital component, which is the running of our buildings and grounds. So uh, how we maintain those buildings, any debt service that we have, any capital construction projects that we have going on. That's based on the capital component. Yeah. And I, I mentioned a percentage before, but it should be, it's probably worthwhile understanding that in, on Long Island, the average expenditures for instruction is about 77%. Ours is 79% and change, almost 80%. Correct. So we're a little bit above the average there. On the capital, we're a little bit high. We're at 12.5% or close to it. And we've done an awful lot of work in our buildings. Most of what the people see and what they will see next year really has to do with the inst in the instructional piece. So I think that's where we have spent most of our time talking. I know that one of our priorities this year and what we spent a good deal of time talking about is mental health and also the change that was required of us in terms of guidance. Maybe we could just take an opportunity to talk about that because I know it's been a priority for the board all, all along as we've been discussing our budget. Um, we, the state has pushed, put down a mandate to, uh, a very vague mandate, but it, was, it refers to mental health and guidance in the elementary schools, but didn't give any clear guidance or, you know, tell us we had to do this or how to do that. Uh, we spent many an hour talking about it, discussing 
what would benefit the students in our elementary schools the most, whether it be a social worker or a guidance counselor. And we've come to the, you know, come to terms with the, the guidance counselor would support our school, our students the most in the situation that we have. So we've, the board has pushed to have a guidance counselor, hire a new guidance counselor that would just concentrate on the five elementaries, uh, be part of the, the, you know, step into with all the, the children's programs, understand what they're doing, take a look at, you know, uh, absentee effect on schoolwork. And I think it's such a big, uh, a very important uh, position to, to put into place at this time. It'll help our children understand that there's more than, one, you know, in elementary you tend to idolize your teacher, look to your teacher for strength, and if you have a problem, the guidance counselor will offer that other opinion, uh, you know, so they can go to somebody else and talk to if they have a problem. It'll help them also adapt to going forward into middle school, because that's where the need, you know, the, the, the guidance counselor comes, becomes more of, you know, more prevalent in their life with, uh, with along with a, a whole assortment of teachers. So I think overall, that's a, it was a, it was a great choice for the board and the administration to, uh, you know, put forward as that guidance counselor in, el in the elementary schools to support social and academic um, in the elementary schools with our students. Yeah, and it's, it's a real challenge. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it seems to be on everybody's radar screen, mental health. And it's a real challenge, and I really have great admiration for the board for being, <laughs> this is not necessarily a year where you want to add a lot, but in fact, by adding a dimension to our elementary schools, just not a resource for children, it's a resource for our staff as well. And I we, think- We feel that the guidance counselor is sometimes the first line- Yes. Um, to all of our students. And when we really look at our student body, and we have 1,658 children between K and five, you know, we don't want to kind of unearth some of the things going on in their lives too late. Mm -hmm. And with the way the world works and their exposure to different things, everything's pushing down a little bit earlier. So the board felt very strongly and we felt very grateful towards administration for agreeing that it's, it's never too early for us to have our finger on the pulse for what our kids are going through and what they need. Um, we feel that can only benefit our children. It's a big investment into their future uh, that we feel very strongly about. Um, and I, we know that there might not be something tangible that people could put their finger on, but we know the value added for having that person come yeah. on board. You know, it's interesting. As John somewhat intimated that, that the struggle was between a social worker and, and a guidance person. And we did. We struggled with that for a while. Uh, but the interesting aspect of it is that it's, it's, it's adding another member to a team that already exists. We have psychologists, we have social workers, and now we will have a guidance counselor mm -hmm. as well. So it does add another dimension mm -hmm. to the decision making and the support services that may be provided to both our teachers and to our children in the elementary schools. Uh, so I don't want people to think that we don't pay attention. Right. Right. Uh, but the struggle was, do we add another social worker, do we add another guidance counselor? And I think at the end of the day, we felt that a guidance counselor could do, could do more. Right. Whereas a social worker was somewhat limited and could not provide the same services that a guidance person could provide. Mm -hmm. So we will see. So we will have a new team of people working together at the elementary schools. Uh, every day there will either be a psychologist or a social worker or guidance counselors in all of our elementary buildings, which is very important. That's that's a that's a crucial point. That someone will be always available for a need in our elementary buildings at yeah. any one, at any given time during the school day. So yeah, very yeah. important. Yeah, you know the other thing that consumed a good deal of our part, although it was uh, somewhat of an easier decision to make because we had done a lot of work in advance, uh, was some of the modifications that we made here at Southside High School to our special education program and to our junior coursework. So maybe we want to talk about that for a few moments. Uh, we've added staff for a special education program. Which we call Pathways. Yes, we do, right? Mm -hmm. I know we even struggle with a name on that. Yes. Uh, in the past, we used to have something called Core 2. This was a very, very different concept, a whole different idea. And so we felt that it needed a different name, so it's, its name is Pathways. Right. Uh, in addition to that, we also made modifications here at Southside High School to the IB program at the, uh, in the junior classes. So we opened up options for kids who might otherwise want to just take only a Regents curriculum. We're putting together a brand new co-teaching model 
in those classes. It's, <laughs> it's somewhat novel, it's somewhat different, but nevertheless, I am really confident that the administration and the staff here at Southside will be able to pull it off and do it very, very effectively. We, we, ch we, dis we it was, it took a long time. It was, uh, there was a lot of community input in this. Uh, it, it, we feel it meets the needs or the desires for the community to have a different direction for their children to take if they felt, you know, <laughs> you know, were not compelled to do a full IB diploma. It just opened up an option for some students to take it, you know, take it in a different direction and hopefully be just as successful with what, you know, as successful in another path in the schools. And one of the things, and we're very proud to offer that, is there's a concept of choice involved in it. And the community spoke loud and clear about wanting that choice. And what we're proud about is that there are students that are special ed students that will, will go IB all the way. And, and we want that choice for our special ed students. And there are gener general ed students that might feel that they would be more fairly assessed on a region's level course, and we want that choice for them as well. So we're proud of what we've constructed. Uh, we think the administration's done a great job with how they've um, kind of illustrated how they can do this. I know they're working really hard on this curriculum writing project. Mm -hmm. um, and John Murphy, uh, we have a lot of faith in what he's going to put together for next year. But we think that uh, the students will have that concept of choice, which was very important. Um, the Pathways program, we're really proud of. It's going to, going to be CSE driven, so they'll take a look at the children individually and decide who might fit that course the best. But there is, again, that Regents exposure, that's the goal, to have them taking Regents classes. Um, but just in a smaller setting, um, with co-teaching and, and special ed teachers um, that, are, that are able to do both. So we're really proud of those additions for next year. Mm -hmm. So the other area in the budget where we spend a lot of time is that I'm sure the community recognizes, certainly the board does, their responsibility that you are the caretakers of these seven buildings that we have uh, and take it very seriously. So we have got to properly maintain them. We have to make sure that they are in good shape. They're not new buildings. Some of them date back as far as 1921. Uh, so it's, it's a challenge to keep them operating every year and uh, now air conditioned <laughs> in every classroom. But again, um, Robert, I don't know if we want to get into a lot of detail about what it is that we're doing. But as you had suggested a little while ago, you know, that, that takes us, a, it's outside the cap, it usually pushes it a little bit above, but it means that the Board of Education is really attending to the needs of our buildings. So I know that one of the major projects that we'll be working on again is, again, because of the age of the building, has to do with the middle school and one of the walls on, uh, maybe you want to talk yeah. about that for a minute? Yeah, the, the biggest, uh problem we have right now is, is the exterior wall at the middle school, uh, which we had a problem with last year. We had to make some emergency repairs, uh, and now we're going to have to make some additional repairs to replacing the outside exterior wall of the middle school. Uh, because it was, the way it was built a number of years ago, it's not adhering to the building and is starting to come away, and our architects have recommended that we go around and, and, and replace that exterior wall. So that's the largest project that we have uh, in the budget for next year as part of the capital projects. We have quite a few others. Uh, as you said, we, we continuously have to maintain the buildings and their uh, continuing changes that have to be done. So we're going to be doing a lot of work on the floors, replacing floors, resanding, replacing. Uh, there's still more HVAC work with the air conditioning. There's a lot of maintenance that has to go on, some ventilation, there's some humidity issues that we're dealing with. And um, we're also, uh, we've talked about playground repairs. We had our playgrounds put in place over 15 years ago in, in most of the elementary schools with the last bond issue. Watson had an upgrade done to theirs, but the other four elementary playgrounds are all in need of, of upgrades. Uh, we don't have enough to replace those playgrounds at this point, but we are gonna make some uh, repairs to each of the elementary playgrounds for next year. Which, by the way, is, is open to the entire community. I mean, it's rare that you can go by any of the schools at any time on the weekends and not see a, a, a whole group of kids uh, at our playground. So it's utilized all the time, not just by kids during the school, during the school day. Uh, 
as to as our buildings are also by the the local sports teams, BBL, uh, the lacrosse clubs. They use our our facilities on a regular basis, and that's what we're all about. We're a public school. We, we're here to serve the public that you know funds the schools and makes sure that we do things. And the, all those things you know mean that we have to upkeep our building. Maybe put a little more wear and tear on our buildings, but it's something that we do because it's a community. We are a community. We here we're here to support Ro the Rockville Center School District. And we focus on mostly academics, but the upkeep of our buildings is very important because we can't teach a class if the roof is leaking or the windows are broken and all the other things that go to keep a building going. And you know, maybe you could say, okay, do we really need to do that? We do. Our buildings will fall apart and be, you know, not function for us in the right way if we don't keep up on it. So you know, you know what's interesting about that is you, you're right. From seven o'clock in the morning when we open our buildings and we have project great and many parents now take advantage of that and drop their children off at seven o'clock in the morning. In all of our elementary buildings, even though the school does not actually open until nine o'clock, we have a large group of children in our buildings at seven o'clock or between seven and eight o'clock in the morning. And then we run activities, you're right, John. Usually in, almost in all of our buildings until 10 o'clock at night. So, I mean, we are a community resource. We definitely are. Right, and it, but it does create wear and tear on all of our buildings that needs to be attended to. And so we spend a lot of time. And I know that you guys individually have, I mean, I, I don't know which schools you went to exactly, but I know that each member of the board visited different schools this year in addition to the collective visitation that we do at the end of every summer. Well, that was an interesting concept for us because we always do the tour of buildings in the summer, but there's no students there, and everything is just waiting for everybody to arrive. It's always in picture perfect, picture perfect and there's not a book in, anywhere <laughs> out of place. Um, and what you know we had spoken about as a board and with the administration was we would like to see the buildings in action. We want to see it filled with people, how they're using their building, how they're using their storage, um, and what could we do to possibly make life in these buildings better. So. We we did divide up the schools between the five board members. Um, we went to all seven schools plus administration plus grounds, our garage area, um, and the greenhouse. So we have been looking at all of the buildings. And I really did enjoy being in the building with the teachers in action, with our children, um, with our principals, and, and really seeing how we function. To your point, the amount of hours that these people put in in a day. It's really incredible to watch it all happening in front of you. I, I walk around very bewildered of how we get it all done in a day. It's an amazing feat that our staff take on every single day. Um, and keeping all those buildings strong is, is a very high priority for all of us. It's funny that our schools for many of our kids are the centerpiece of their life. There, right. there are many kids in our elementary buildings who arrive at seven and don't leave until six o'clock at night right. because we are able to accommodate and help the families support their children. And then when you take a look, I mean, I, here at Southside High School, my God, between the athletics and the theater and the music, you can walk in here almost any night and you're gonna find kids here. Till uh, 11, I think, on, <laughs> on, on a lot of nights. Well, we won't tell, right, right okay, right. 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 But, <laughs> but many times until 11 o'clock at night, you're absolutely right, yeah. But that's what the school district is all about. Right. It's all about children, it's about the people we serve. We serve this community, we're an integral part of the community. Uh, there's a value added to the education that we provide to our children here. I think people are very proud of their schools, very proud of what the Board of Education does. But we're kind of winding down right now at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any... Well, we, first of all, we have to say that we're going... To, the, the community has got to understand that on May 21st, every year, or thereabouts, but this year it is May 21st, uh, our expenditure plan is put out to the community for a vote. So from seven o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night, you will have an opportunity to come here to Southside High School and vote. So we can't tell you how to vote, but we can certainly say that, that this Board of Education has done a yeoman's job in meeting the needs of our children, meeting the needs of this community. So my thanks to you for the work that you've done. I'd just, I'd just like to add this budget represents primary academics for our, for our students, because that's our obligation, but it represents so much more. It, as Dr. Johnson made reference to, athletics, uh, clubs, um, you know, all, all, the, all these little components make, it make this budget what it is. We need, we need the, the funds to, to do all these things for our, for our students, the, the arts, the plays, 
you know, so many things fall into this budget. So it's not just the nine to three school day that this the budget supports. It's it's the nine to ten or eleven that or seven to ten to eleven that this budget supports, and all the the good things in addition to academics that we provide our students. You know, so interesting when you say it that way. If I'll just say it a little bit differently. So for for every single program, there has to be a fiscal plan, and that's what you guys work on that fiscal plan to make sure that all of those programs, all of those services are supported. And I think you've done a great job. I mean. Thank you, and we're very grateful to Robert and yeah. to all the administrators for all the input because this is obviously a very huge group effort. Um, every question that we ask of administration is, is returned with gusto. Uh, you know, we are very impressed with the amount of work that goes into the budget on, on that end as well, and we're happy to work together to put together a very strong plan for our kids. It's About very 10 important. minutes after we fold up our tent for this year's budget, right. he starts on That's next right. year. So literally in October and November is when we start putting together right. the fiscal plan for the following year. Okay. So you're right. It, it, it's a very time-consuming, very detail-oriented process, uh, but one which is uh, attended to very, very carefully by the Board of Education. So, and We are a five-member board that serves the community, but we don't operate in a vacuum. We, we, we put so much weight on what the administration provides us, the principals provide us, and the parents. We are, we are always open to our, our parents coming in. So we're all part of the process that formulates that final budget. And we get there with everybody's input, and we as the five board members are stewards to be financially responsible to the taxpayers of the district. So that's how we achieve the number at the end of the day. And we work to make sure that we can provide as much possible with those dollars. And you just got the last word. So <laughs> thank you very much, both of you, for coming. Robert, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Just one last reminder, uh, the voting day this year for us is May 21st here at Southside High School. It begins at 7 o'clock in the morning and ends at 9 o'clock at night. We look forward to seeing you. Hope to hope you feel about the schools the way in which we do. So we we'll hope to see you there that day. Bye now. Take care.